What's up everybody? This is Eric Reed Harry. And in this video, I'm doing an experiment with my ceramic beads. And um, so the idea is I'll be mixing up a white Portland cement, and this one's gray, with a cement dye for coloring these ceramic beads. And um, I'll be applying that as a waterproof color coating onto my domes. So this is designed to go on thin for my coloring and a final waterproof hard coat. So the experiment I'm doing here is to test how well of a thermal barrier these ceramic beads are going to act. So I'm going to be doing three experiments here. I'm going to have a control, which will be just sand and cement. Then I'll have a sample where I'll have sand, ceramic, and cement. And then I have a sample that will be just cement and ceramic. So I'm going to be mixing that up. Um, I pre-made these meshes. I glued this basalt mesh onto this fiberglass mesh. And so because this was like buckling and I want to try and make it really thin and I didn't want no high spots so I figured I'd just glue it on because you always want to mix the cement and apply it to something so I'm applying it to these meshes and I just have a piece of cardboard with, with tape on it so that it'll come off and again the idea is to apply it thinly so we're gonna start with the cement and sand I'll be using this as my mixing bowl but because it's windy now, I'm covering my ceramic because that's very light and the wind wants to blow it away. And I'll just be using this cap here as a measuring device. So I'm gonna do a, um, a one cap of cement. So that's a cap, one cap of cement, Portland cement. And I'm gonna do well it's supposed to be such a small batch um, I guess I'll just do one cap of sand okay and this sand is wet it's been out but this is a fine sand uh, this sand is um, for sandblasting So you saw me making these samples. Uh, they've been <clears throat> curing for two days. This is actually the third day. I did a test on the stove and recorded it, but the recording did not come out. So I'm gonna redo it. That's why this looks charred. So I have a flare camera. And what I'll be doing is we're gonna put these samples on the stove on a high flame and uh, we're gonna see how long it takes for the heat to pass through so remember we're gonna have a direct flame on high and um, I'll actually be putting these face down because we have the mesh you can see there exposed so we're gonna put this top side down on the flame and this sample here is a control is portland cement and sand only this is portland cement sand and ceramic beads this is portland cement and ceramic beads 
So we're gonna see the temperature difference. Now, as I said, I've done this already and I'm just gonna do it so you can see it on the flare camera. The control sample gets hot quick. Remember now, these are really thin. I'm not sure exact thickness, but they're all about the same thickness. So it shouldn't take long at all for the heat to pass through uh, the other side. This one got hot quickly and these other ones took much longer before the heat got to the other side. So I'm going to turn the stove on, put the flame on high, and then I'll put these samples on and we'll look at it through the flare. Okay, so we have the samples on. This is the control. It's just Portland cement and sand. Here is the piece with ceramic beads. And I have high flame. Now the idea behind this, the dome I'm currently building, it's a nine foot ceramic dome. The idea is to put this coating on the outside of the, of the dome structure as a thin coating that's gonna act as a waterproof coating as well as a coloring, as well as a thermal barrier. So you can see on the control sample, Portland cement sand only, it's heating up, like especially on the edges. This flare camera uh, maxes out around this temperature, I think. And these are the samples with the ceramic beads. They were all placed on at the same time. And you can see this sample is heating up massively. So, you know, you got the center of your stove and then you have the flame that's around the outside. So that's why you see this outer edge. So this is already maxed out. So technically these should all be the same temperature, but they're not. You can see this is taking way longer to heat up. Again, this sample we're looking at now is the ceramic beads and cement only. And this has ceramic beads, cement, and sand. So, look, you can see this whole sample is already uh, like the same temperature. This one's heating up. So, really, the, the main point of this is to see that there is a difference in the thermal barrier that these materials will handle. So the heat is, you know, it's a thermal bridge traveling through the cement. And the same thing here, but we have ceramic in there. So that's slowing down the heat a lot. And here's the, the coolest one. It's hot here, but we have to remember this is on a high flame. So I'm going to turn the flame off now. One second. Okay, so the main point of this was to show that by adding the ceramic beads, it slowed down the heat transfer massively. So again, this is a very thin tile and it has a it had a direct flame on it. So let's just check. The center of this one is showing like 265. This one's 253. This one's 300. So now if the idea is to reflect heat and or to reflect the cold during winter, you can see if you just have a normal sand cement mix, it will heat up. Whereas these other samples will also heat up, but they will heat up much, much slowly, much more slowly. <laughs> and the other thing is, um, by me adding this to the exterior of the dome as a thermal barrier, and then adding these ceramic beads into the paint, and painting the interior of the dome... I will get a big thermal barrier. Um, so again, it's not insulation, but it's a thermal barrier. 
So if you can efficiently stop the heat or cold traveling through the material, then you essentially can heat and cool your structure easier and quicker. So anyway, obviously this is not a super technical test. Ideally, if I had one of those R value uh, machines that could measure the R value, you could see uh, exactly what the efficiency would be. But uh, there is a big difference. You can see also in the cooling down of this. So give me a second. I'm going to flip these samples over and we'll measure the temperature on the other side. Okay, so I flipped all the samples over. That's showing 349, 317, 317 and 3. So it's much hotter on this side. I'm going to flip them back over one more time. Again, that's the control sample. Three or four. Well, it's uh, definitely uh, cooler on this side, and um, there's definitely been some thermal barrier effect happening. Well, anyway, this is just a quick and simple test I'm doing here to demonstrate how the ceramic beads do act as a thermal barrier. Uh, don't forget this is over a direct flame and um, the idea is just to reflect the heat of the sun. So thankfully uh, the sun beaming down on your structure is not going to be over 300 degrees. So if we're just using it to reflect the heat of the sun as well as reflect cold there is definitely a thermal barrier effect happening by using the beads. Um, but there's uh, 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 these beads are actually designed to go into paint. And so adding it into paint also creates an incredible thermal barrier. And another way to increase the efficiency of these is to get bigger ceramic beads. These ceramic beads are really small, almost powder-like. So they come in different sizes. So if you get larger ceramic beads, uh, oh, and I didn't mention these ceramic beads aren't just ceramic. They're actually a sphere with a hollow vacuum on the inside. So these tiny spherical ceramic beads with a hollow vacuum create this thermal barrier um, that you can add into your paint. Or in my case, I'm adding into my stucco mix as the final coating on the dome. So anyway, I just wanted to show you all this quick test. This is Eric Harry. Peace out, and I'll catch you later.